it's better perhaps to think of the singularity in terms of human experience. Right now, due to the way our brains are built, we have a few states of consciousness that follow us around every day. There's the ordinary waking state of consciousness. There's various kinds of sleep. There's a flow state of consciousness that we get into when we're really into the work we're doing or playing music and we're really into it. There's various enlightened states you can get into by meditating a really long time. The spectrum of states of consciousness that human beings can enter into, it's a tiny little fragment of all the possible ways of experience. When the singularity comes, it's going to bring us a wild variety of states of consciousness, a wild variety of ways of thinking and feeling and experiencing the world. Well, well I think we're, we're expected to increasingly perform in mixed realities. So sometimes we, we're, we're biological bodies, uh, sometimes we're machinically augmented and accelerated and other times we have to manage data streams in virtual systems. So uh, we have to seamlessly slide between these three sort of modes of operation and engineering uh, new interfaces, more intimate interfaces, so we can do this more seamlessly um, is an important strategy. And plenty of scientists would say that it's crazy and there's no way. And uh, I, 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 I guess we could have that debate. And it, but they might agree with me that if it is crazy, it's crazy because of how the world works socially and not because of how difficult it is intrinsically. It's, it's not crazy for scientific reasons, it's crazy because the world is crazy. I think that people, when they look at the future, if they do accept this idea that there are going to be drastic changes and great advances, they will necessarily try to fit that very complex, impossible to really understand future into very familiar mental models because they want to put things in boxes, they want to feel like they have some kind of grip on that. So I won't be surprised to see you know, Christian transhumanists and Mormon transhumanists and even Buddhist transhumanists and every other group um, will have some kind of set of these ideas, they will gradually accept them, but they'll make their future world fit with their pre-existing views as to how it will be. Um, and I think that uh, the essence of transhumanism is not, is not religious, it's really based on humanism. It's an extension of humanism, hence transhumanism. It's really based on the ideas of reason and progress and enlightenment and a kind of a secularism. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's incompatible with trying to you know, make certain of the transhumanist ideas of self-improvement, of enhancement. I think those are potentially compatible with at least non-fundamentalist forms of religion.